Hello everybody, welcome back to Sophistic Cakes by Mary. So listen, I know there's a lot going on on this cake. The reason for that is that I only had time to do one cake this week and I had too many ideas and I decided to throw them all into one cake. <laughs> so the takeaway from this is maybe use one or two elements, you don't have to use them, all, use them all, but I decided to. So we have a textured wafer paper wrap and I also am gonna show you how to add a stencil and some movement to your wafer paper toppers. So let's get started. To do the wafer paper wrap, we're gonna use some styrofoam cake dummies and some luster dust. I have a pink, pale pink, and a pearl luster dust, and obviously some wafer paper. I used for these, I used a um, zero grade wafer paper. Now what I'm gonna do with these very dirty cake dummies, obviously, I'm going to wrap them with something because they need to be washed, I am aware. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is using, I coated them with some, some shortening and I'm using some plastic wrap and I am just creating texture with that plastic wrap and wrapping it around the cake dummies. Now this is going to be a six inch taller double barrel cake. So that is why I'm using the six inch cake dummies. And this is going to be a um, gradation, an ombre pink into pearl. So I am doing a couple different versions of these. So what I'm doing there, that is some wafer paper conditioner, which I will add a link to the bottom in the description below on how to make that. And what that does is makes your wafer paper more pliable. And then it doesn't dry hard. It dries a little flexible, which is nice when you're going to wrap it around a cake. Now I've done this with rice paper in the past and I like that too. But the difference is that with the wafer paper, like I said, the um, pliability of it is a little easier to work with than the rice paper. So what I'm doing is I had added the luster dust to the wafer paper conditioner also. I am spraying it on and I also have it in the little silicone little cupcake containers. And I am just dipping my brush in there and just dabbing it on. Now I do have some bigger cake dummies and that's fine since they are um, pliable and a little bit moldable. If you don't have exactly six inch ones, that's okay. Use a slightly larger size and it will, it will wrap around your cake just fine with no problem. And then I added a little bit of gold on the bottom. You know me, gotta add my gold. And I did mix that with, with the, um, the conditioner also. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make some wafer paper um, flowers. So same thing here, some more of the conditioner and some of the luster dust. You can use whatever color luster dust you want. That is totally up to you. And what I'm doing is just cutting these into a rough shape of a petal. These don't have to be neat and tidy because they are to be more rustic. Uh, is the only word I can come up with. It's more abstract, I guess that's a better word. They don't need to be perfect. And I did end up doing two different sizes. And I wanted to dip them in these, this um, conditioner. That's why I moved it into a larger bowl. This is super easy. Use the backs of, I have these sphere molds, silicone sphere molds, and I also have some egg shaped ones. And you can use both of those. And you can even use smaller ones if you want to, if you want your petals to be smaller. Just dip them in, drape them over the silicone and let them dry. These and your um, textured wrap will take about, I would say, I did this all in one day, um, start to finish. So I would say once you have them dipped and um, soaked in your um, wafer paper conditioner with your luster dust, set them in front of a fan for probably about two hours or until dry. Now to make these um, spiral toppers with the stencil, I wanted to add obviously some more of that luster dust that is kind of the theme here. So I'm just dry brushing it on. I didn't want them to be really saturated. I just wanted them to have a hint of the, um, the pearl, the opal pearl color and, um, and the, the pale pink. And I'm just cutting these in triangles and then kind of rounding out those bottom ends. Just because I didn't want those bottom edges to take up too much room on your cake. Because you got to remember with this design, there's a lot concentrated on that outside corner of the top of the cake. So you want to make sure that your bottoms of these are not too big. And to do the stenciling, I just brushed these with some shortening. 
Shortening is a girl's best friend. <laughs> so shortening and uh, in other countries, I believe trex is what it's called, would be the same thing. You can do it with that also. And then I'm just using a sponge and dry brushing or dry sponging on top of the stencil and it's going to stick where the shortening is. Now just make sure that you're holding it down fairly tightly and dab it on. Try not to brush it, dab it. And then just remove your stencil. And that is so easy, guys, so easy. And you don't have to do gold. You can do whatever color luster you want. And I did this on a bunch of them, but I'm only showing you two. Otherwise, this would be a very long video. This is already almost four hours of a video. Okay, so like I said, I did this all in one day. Um, <laughs> and I did a lot. So, uh, yeah. You don't need to see me doing everything. But here I just was showing that I cut the other pieces of wafer paper in the same way. And I put those skewers in the foam dummy because once I had these bent into the shape, I did not want that luster dust to rub off by laying on a piece of parchment. I wanted them to stay standing up. So I just put those skewers there and I'm going to rest them in there. And I'm using, this is just a steamer, a clothing steamer. And this is how you're going to bend your wafer paper into shape. You'll take, and, and with the gold, make sure that the steam is hitting the back of the paper, not where your gold is, because that could actually melt your gold and smudge it. Do that sparingly. Get it in the heat, the steam, and then take it out and, and hold it, and then put it back and then hold it outside of the steam. And be careful because your fingers too. This can be very hot, this is steam, so just be cautious. And then I did this with the white and, well, the pearl and the, um, the blushy pink color also. And some of them, I just kind of did a random shape, not necessarily a spiral. I didn't want them all in exactly that shape. I wanted some variation in textures here. Boy, I wish I could move that fast. <laughs> now that our petals are dry, we are going to just, they just lift right off of those molds. I just kind of pinch the silicone underneath and lift it right off. Now I did three or four uh, flowers, can't remember, but I did two to five-ish petals on each one. And this is how I'm gonna form them. I use my floral wire and I just use my needle nose pliers to wrap it, twist, twist it into a hook shape and then take a little strip of your wafer paper wet it in your conditioner and then just wrap it around your um, your hook on your wire and that's going to be what you attach your petals to like I'm doing there. You just you can add a little bit of the conditioner like that <laughs> right on the tip there. Don't saturate it so much that it melts because it can melt it just so that it gets tacky. This you kind of learn with with experience in time. And sometimes you don't even need to add any if you're just doing one or two petals on that center piece because it's already wet and if you attach them right away it will stick right to it. Now to form these they are going to be going to be a little bit floppy until they have dried which they dry very quickly. So I like to dry them upside down like that just bend your hook upside down or you can drape it over like um, a wire cookie sheet that is raised up some of them have legs you can you can hook it on the bottom side of one of those that works too. And then what you'll find is once they have dried, there is a little bit of flexibility in moving those petals a little bit. If they're too closed, you can go ahead and open them up a little bit. And then once these are, you don't need the wrap to be 100% dry. It was not 100% dry. As long as it holds its shape and isn't sticky, you can take it off of that um, saran wrap. And then I'm just brushing the backs with some just piping gel. And then just sticking it directly onto my buttercreamed cake. Now I do have, you guys asked and I finally did it. I've had a lot of questions about recipes. So the recipe for this chocolate cake, I did film and I will be making, getting a video ready on that very soon. So that is coming. And then I'm just ombre coloring, applying the colors in the ombre from the, the pearl on the top to a pale pink to a little darker pink on the bottom. And then the gold on the very, very bottom. What I don't show is when I did 
brush the tips of the top edges of the um, rice paper wrap and um, with some gold also. I don't know where that went. I always end up losing some footage of some kind. And that is just luster dust mixed with Everclear and brushed on. You can use um, vodka, you could use lemon extract. I have heard you can actually even use olive oil. I haven't tried it yet, but I was told you can do that. Thanks for the hints, guys. I do listen to you. And then to attach these, I did use some buttercream. I know people are shy on using buttercream with rice, or rice paper, sorry, wafer paper. But what I find is you can. If you stick it in the refrigerator right away after you apply them, you can use that buttercream because once it starts to crust, it's not going to melt your pieces. This was in my refrigerator for about three days before my son's birthday. This Yes, this was for my son. He doesn't get a boy cake. He's 17. He gets a pretty cake so I can make a video. <laughs> He's fine with it. He's had plenty of character cakes, believe me. Um, so yeah, it was in my refrigerator for actually about five days and they were fine. So I did add some gold dragees also. I'll add a link on where you get that mixture of gold um, dragees, the rods and the different sizes of dragees. So there you go, guys. I hope you liked it. I know it's busy, but remember, just take the elements that you want to use. You don't have to use them all. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.